Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and the people of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. A voice came from heaven. You are my son, beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Well, good morning. My name is Pastor Julie Grafe, and uh, it is my joy and honor to be here with you today. You all who came out and braved the cold, um, I am so happy to be here. Uh, it was an honor that uh, Pastor Jason asked me uh, to come in his stead. So. Uh, thank you for that. Um, Taylor is unfortunately, uh, due to the weather and driving conditions, was not, Vicar Taylor was not able to, to come today. So we are just um, showing up and letting God do what God does best, right? So uh, thank you for, for uh, uh, being here for worship today. You know, I've always had an affinity for water. I'm not sure why, but there is something with water that just connects with me whether it's that sound of water calmly lapping on a shore or hearing waves crash, you know, on the beach, hearing that rhythmic, steady beat of that gentle summer rain or hearing that water poured from a stream into the baptismal font. Something about that very sound of water it quiets my mind and it connects somewhere deeper inside of me. Somehow that noise of water connects me to that mysterious and heavenly voice of God. Perhaps you might find that too. Perhaps you, like me, might even think of a time that you've experienced that, an encounter with water where you felt connected to God, where perhaps you noticed, maybe even heard God's voice. Perhaps you had an intimate conversation with God about some transition, a problem, some kind of life event, or maybe just joyous gratitude. You know that water has always been part of our faith narrative. In our first reading today, it was a familiar one. In the beginning, at the very start, God's creation story from Genesis begins, and we are told the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while the wind of God swept over the faces of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Water has always been in the beginning. So whenever we celebrate a baptism, we retell the baptismal story, the biblical story of water. In fact, if you open your hymnals to page 230, you can see exactly what we say at the font. 
We say, we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters and by your word, you created the world, calling forth life into which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. And through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise up us up to live in you. Now, of course, we know there are countless stories, water stories in scripture, like Jonah and the big fish that gets, he goes out into the sea, or stories of Jesus calming the sea, or one of my favorites, walking on the water. Women encounter God as they fetch water, and the eunuchs run to the rivers to be baptized. Water is everywhere in our biblical narrative. And where it is a place where many of us see, touch, hear, and taste and feel God in our lives. But it's today that we hear one of those ultimate stories of water. Jesus' baptism in the waters of the River Jordan. When Jesus comes to be baptized, Baptism in the River Jordan has already been transformative for many. The Gospel writer Mark clearly tells us that people from all over the Judean countryside have been coming to John to confess their sins, to repent, and be baptized into forgiveness. As if all those experiences of conversion were not enough, something more extraordinarily happens in that water. Jesus comes from Nazareth to be baptized by John. And when he comes up out of the water, the heavens are torn apart and the spirit descends upon him. Then God's voice speaks to Jesus saying, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. Just like all those other stories of water, something sacred, Something transformative happens in water. Something so powerful that the heavens are torn apart. The spirit descends and the Lord proclaims love, favor, affection. Now imagine many of us here today may not remember our own baptisms. Though adults and young people are certainly welcome to baptize later in life, most of us are baptized as infants or very young children. So unless your parents or your godparents or family told you the story of your baptism, we don't know if we cried or if we cooed or what really happened for us that day. For most of us, that holy experience of that water being poured upon us at our own baptism is a lost memory. Yet the church does not let us forget the power of baptismal waters. Every year, we celebrate the feast of Jesus' baptism. We're reminded, just as it happened in the Jordan River, God comes to each of us in our baptisms to proclaim that we are beloved, to lay claims on our lives, to mark us with a sign of love, a cross on our foreheads. We are reminded that in these baptismal waters, we have been baptized into Christ's life, death, and resurrection, and joined to the body of Christ. We're reminded that we've been united into a family of fellow children of God. We're reminded that we are a community. We're a community of followers. But you know, today's not just a day to celebrate these sacred experiences of water. Today is not a day when we just think back of our own encounters at the font and just think how holy they were. Today is not just a day that we think back on the biblical stories of water and our faith and marvel at those miracles that have happened through water. Because see, 
the danger of this text that we hear from Mark today is that's what we could be tempted to do, to just do that. Our gospel story ends with those words of the divine saying, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Oh, we could just sit here today and savor those words for Jesus. They are amazing. They are powerful words. I could just end my sermon right here and tell you that these words are for you, that you are God's beloved, and God is well pleased. I could do that, because it is true. You are God's beloved, and God is well pleased with you, no matter what you have done or not done. You belong to God. Those baptismal waters should always remind you of that. And all those other waters, the lakes and the rivers, the oceans, the rain, the melting snow, your daily shower, that should remind you. But the thing is today, we don't simply celebrate the gift of blessing, that we are beloved. Today is the day that we celebrate the so what of Jesus's baptism. Because if you look at Jesus's baptism, we can see it's not an end, but it's a beginning. Baptism is what starts Jesus's ministry. The Spirit powerfully enters into Jesus's body, into his life. The Spirit empowers Jesus to go forward. In Mark's gospel, the next verse that we didn't read says that Jesus is driven out by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted. His baptism opens a road that will lead to the cross. For Jesus, his entire ministry is informed by one moment, this tremendous inbreaking of the Spirit and a declaration of Jesus of being God's beloved. But notice, Jesus doesn't just sit and linger in this moment, in this belovedness. Jesus keeps moving. I love how one biblical commentator made a, said something. She said, Jesus did not just receive the Spirit in order to enjoy it privately and its spiritual benefits, but rather in order to pass it on. And I think that's our invitation today, too to think about the so what of our own baptisms, our own sacred, watery moments. In our own baptism and together today in our remembrance of baptism, we come to the water with Jesus, following Jesus. Our baptisms mirror Jesus's because our baptisms are not meant to be the end of anything. Our baptism is not something that completes a divine requirement for our life, but something that starts our own life of ministry, our life of community, our life of following Jesus. And following Jesus will have us live our lives where he did, among the poor, the hurting, the rejected, the hungry, the homeless, the refugee, the ones out in the cold, those who are forgotten by this world. Following Jesus will have us at odds with the establishment of going against the keepers of the tradition, of the preservers of this is the way we've always done it in order for us to find something new. Following Jesus will have us challenge the powerful and criticize oppressors and drive us to use our voice and move our feet towards a more just world. Following Jesus will have us humble ourselves, love our neighbor, and be servants of all. This week I read that baptism is often called the door to the church, but is also the door into God's vineyard where there is work for all. Yes, indeed, dear church, there is work to be done. 
So that's the so what of our baptism. Beloved, we are here because we are following Christ. We are followers of Jesus. We walk wet in this world, soaked with that blessing and affirmation that comes from Jesus, that comes to each of us. Indeed, you can come to Jesus' story today like you would come to any body of water for renewal and refreshment. But you also need to walk out these doors today. In fact, our liturgy doesn't let you leave this place without a dismissal, sending you out into the world to do the work that God has given you to do. So the question this week is, what is that work? What is God renewing you for? What is God empowering you to do? I suspect that the answers would be different for each of us. But know and trust that the answer is there if you are willing to listen to the sacred sound of water. Amen.